Hello, this is Dr. Tarun Agarwal, and I'd like to share with you a Sirik meets Galileo's case study on 3D implant dentistry. Today's case will focus on an immediate placement and an immediate temporization technique. Let's begin by taking a look at our patient photographs and radiograph. A patient came to the office with his immediate concern and chief complaint that he had broken tooth number seven off. As we can see from the x-ray in the clinical photos here, tooth number seven is pretty much broken to the gum line, had previously had a PFM and had a pre-existing root canal treatment. If we take a closer look at some clinical photos, we can see that a the patient has a low lip line and so that the gingival will not show if we were to choose to do any type of crown lengthening or implant treatment. But we can see that the tooth does show when he smiles, as we would expect for tooth number seven. Closer photographs, uh, retractive view, show a significant wear um, of the lower teeth and some concerns that this may cause in a long-term treatment planning. If we take a look at his retracted view and centric occlusion, we can also see the type of clearance that we have, his general occlusal pattern, and how this wear of his lower teeth may affect our long-term treatment planning. We can also notice some buttressing bone on the upper and lower. Close-up view shows very little tooth structure that remains, uh, questionable for any feral effect. Um, whether or not a post is necessary, additional crown lengthening may be necessary. Um, these are all items that need to be discussed with the patient when making a long-term treatment plan in this scenario. So let's look at our treatment options, as uh, we have several different treatment options depending on the manner in which we would like to go forward. If we choose to save the tooth, we have the option of doing a post and core and crown and the possibility of needing crown lengthening to gain uh, additional tooth structure for ferrule and to have, uh, present retention and resistance form or orthodontic treatment to extrude the root to gain uh, retention and resistance form and ferrule for the crown. Um, personally, I have some concerns on the long-term viability of a post corn crown and the costs associated with doing all of this treatment. Uh, so one of the things I would like to look at is the possibility of implant treatment here. Of course, the patient always has the option of simply taking out the tooth and just leaving the missing tooth. But what are our options if we choose to take a look at implant dentistry? Well, our first option is to take the tooth out, uh, graft, and then come back and place an implant at a future date. Obviously, this is a tried and true method. Um, what, what's the method that we have some of the longest uh, research and results with, but the negative in this situation is that it does add a significant amount of time to our treatment, and usually patients aren't very interested in taking a year to complete implant treatment in the anterior. So one of the options we have is to take out the tooth, place the implant immediately, and then do some type of temporization through a flipper, or some type of Essex retainer with a denture tooth in there. The issue here is most patients aren't interested in wearing a removable device and the flipper or the Essex retainer doesn't do anything to help with soft tissue development uh, in the anterior. Our final option, and obviously the option that we choose in this scenario, is to take the tooth out, place an immediate implant, and assuming, and as long as we get enough primary stability, we place an immediate temporary. So the key here is to plan for the taking the tooth out atraumatically, planning to place the implant immediately into a reasonable amount of fresh bone to gain primary stability, and having a technique to produce a temporary to place onto that implant. And this is where Sarek meets Galileos becomes unbelievably helpful in this scenario.